Over the last 50 years, Four Wheel Campers has built a lot of campers. There's a lot of old ones out on the road and there's a lot of new ones coming out of the factory. Customers ask often, how do I take care of my camper? I want to keep this for a long time. I want it to be a good investment. I want it to hold its value and I want it to be functional, everything working well. On the rear wall of the camper, probably just general maintenance, keep it clean. You'll get a lot of road dirt back here. So wash it off, soap and water, let it dry. Having a clean camper, no salt, no dirt, no grime. Keep your finish looking better longer. Keep your screws, the trim screws holding up longer. Just better maintenance, um, kind of good, good uh, practices. Porch light, sometimes the switch gets dirty from road dust. So if your rear porch light's not working, we have a video on how to clean this, but check your bulb and then clean your switch. 99% of the time, this thing will work all the time. Switch gets dirty or the bulb burns out. LED bulbs last for a long time, but just clean your switch. That should come back to life. This one has a built-in cassette toilet, which is not as common. We do a few. There's not much maintenance with these. There's just a cassette holding tank in here. It comes out. Just keep that area clean down in here. Keep the bugs and the wasps and the bees out of there. Put your tank back in there and just empty it. Close that door. Uh, rear door lock back here. Kind of a, that this is a, a more common thing that people will take care of other than washing it. Year to year, like maybe once a year, spray some graphite in here, some lock grease, like get it from a hardware store, lock supply, Walmart, Amazon. Keep these little lock cores greased up whether it's a water filler or a cassette door, but your door handle for sure and your deadbolt for sure makes a big difference keeping this free and clear. Take these little deadbolts here and squirt some grease in here, move them back and forth a few times, get that flowing and like nice and smooth. The water tank drain back here on many of the campers, after five or 10 years, we'll just get sunbaked. It's a white, plastic water tank drain and you can get a replacement very easily from our service department or online every five or ten years just change this out if you need to when it gets dry and brittle like this one is this one's seven years old and it's been sitting out in the sun just put a new we a uh, new drain cock on there two screws hose clamp really easy change out we have a video on youtube about how to do that as well Solar port, you don't need to worry about. Just keep it clean. That's about it on the rear wall. We'll go over to the driver's side here. Camper jacks, I've never even greased any of my jacks, but if you have a problem with your jacks, you can take the little cover off and throw just a little squirt of gear grease in here. Some good heavy duty grease. Keep that gear flowing smoothly. Your jacks will go up and down a little easier. Shower port, this is the outside shower port. You'll have a shower hose and a shower wand. Sometimes we'll, we'll spray some lubricant, some silicone on the tip of the shower port before we put it in there and put it in and out of there a couple of times just to keep that clean and free and moving. Electrical, this is for shore power connection. Not much ever goes wrong with that. Just keep the spiders out of there. Water filler, this fills the freshwater tank. Ideally for maintenance, drain, drain your water tank when not in use. Just get the old water out of there and leave it empty. Winterize the system if you're in cold weather. For fresh water, a lot of people will use a couple, just tablespoons of bleach in here or RV water freshener, RV water sanitizer. Keep your water free from bacteria. But if you leave the tank empty, you use fresh water each trip. Usually the tank works great. Hot water heater. Not much you need to do. This is the older style. They used Atwood and then Atwood was bought out by Dometic. So this is a six gallon propane heater. Uh, most common thing to go wrong with these, if there is anything, is bees. Uh, whether it's a, a spider web in this little curved burner tube here or down in the burner tank area, you'll get wasps nests we have those a lot here in northern california whether it's a the paper wasp the little paper nest or the mud what i would call mud daubers might, might be the right term but 
they make a, a nest of little mud in there. So make sure that there's no spiders, bees, anything built up in there. Blow this out with compressed air if you have spider webs in here. And that that's about it for this. The same thing, actually one more thing back here. You have an exhaust tube back in this area where the hot exhaust is coming out. Just look down there with a flashlight like this and make sure there's no bees nests in there, wasp nests. Side of the camper, just keep it clean, soap and water. Front of the camper, same thing, keep it clean, soap and water. There's protectants that you can use, whether it's uh, liquid wax, uh, paste wax, or protectants product 303. Uh, this will keep the bugs from sticking. You get a lot in summertime, you get a lot of bugs up here. And if you keep that clean and smooth, it's easier to get the bugs off. Same thing with the front wall, just wash it, soap and water every once in a while, keep it clean. That'll keep that living looking good for a long time. Uh, the product that we use for the aluminum skin is called per the best one that I've ever seen, personal choice only, but it's called Protect All. Two words, protect dash all. And you can find it at Amazon or Walmart or any of the RV stores. Sprays on, wipes off, great. Shines the camper, keeps it really clean, shiny. The bug dirt don't stick to it. It's almost like a liquid wax, but it's really easy to use. Awning, just stow that away. When you stow it away for long periods of time, just make sure that fabric is dry. Keep the sides clean. Refrigerator vents on this particular camper on the passenger side. This is a lot like the hot water heater. There's a lot of room inside of here for leaves and dirt and pests, whether it's bees or wasps. Wasps will fly up into here or fly up into here or back in the, the burner area. This is a propane refrigerator. So you have a, a burner tube back behind this grate here. Just keep this clean so you don't have whole leaves. It's not mud dubbers, paper wasps, keep all that stuff out of there so it can burn and clean. Propane, you have two propane tanks. Keep them full, keep them empty, doesn't really matter. The best thing you can do for your propane system, the propane lines, the propane regulator, your stove, your uh, everything inside that runs on propane. If you're not using the camper for long periods of time, shut your propane tank off. You can leave the valve hooked up if you want, but if you turn your propane supply off, hop inside the camper and light the two burner stove and burn off the rest of the propane. So that way the propane's not sitting in the lines throughout the camper for months or years. Propane, uh, liquid propane is petroleum based. So it has oil residue inside of it. Sometimes that oil, if the propane's pressurized and sitting in your propane lines and your propane regulator, it can gum that up over time. It takes a really long time and it's very rare, but if you close your tanks, light your stove until they, they go out, turn your stove knobs back off, shut everything down. That way you have no, no propane sitting in your system when you're storing it. This one has an awning light that's not working. Check our video on how to clean that switch. Camper jacks we've covered and back to the rear wall. So after that, we have camper base. Keep your camper base clean. It's down below here, but you have a wooden camper base. Some campers have skin, aluminum skin here. Some have wood. Just keep this nice and clean. If you need to every like five to 10 years, throw, throw an extra coat of paint on it. But just check for spiders like this one has a little nest a little egg, spider egg there, and it, it had a uh, wasp nest right up in here because it's just been sitting on their truck for, I think, seven years. They never took it off. A lot of, lot of dirt and spider webs. You just give it a good bath, let it dry out, and off you go. We'll go up to the pop-up fabric and the roof next. The next portion of the camper we're going to cover is your soft sides, what we call the pop-up portion. It's a marine grade vinyl, it's airtight, waterproof, ripstop fabric, very durable, holds up well, but you do have to take care of it. You gotta keep it clean and usually a good idea once a year, treat it with vinyl cleaner. You can do that by soap and water, just wash it off, let it dry. Then with a rag or a microfiber, apply, Just this just sprays on there, just squirts on. 
we try to stay away from rubbing on the screens, but we do all the vinyl portion, coat it with this, and then we'll go back over it. If you, if you have scuffs or dirt marks here, like a little wear mark dirt marks, we'll hit it with a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser along with the product 303. And it takes some elbow grease, but it'll, it'll get all of those lines out of there. And having this stuff on there also keep these from forming. So not much maintenance, just keep it clean, keep it dry, hit it with some protectant once a year, and off you go. We're at the top of the camper now, roof maintenance here. This is a pretty simple camper. It's a 2015, I believe. Doesn't have the extra roof vent, just has the one piece roof. Four wheel camper started with a one piece, no seam, no screw roof. About 2008, 2009, so the last 12, 13 years. Just keep it clean. Soap and water, get, you'll get mold or dirt, and just if you park underneath trees, just keep the, the top clean. Soap, water, check around your solar port. Make sure there's no cracks in the sealant. If you have a solar panel, panel mounted up here, just keep it clean. Don't let it get covered with leaves, dirt, just wash it off with soap and water, let it dry so it has the best performance being clean. This one has a basic roof vent back here. Seven years of sitting in the sun. You can see a little bit of a crack in the caulking here. Not a big deal at all, but that's a great example. Underneath this is butyl tape. So you have a weather barrier, a weather seal underneath the vent and this extra white caulking is more of a beautification. So don't be freaked out if you see that, but just check all your seals, keep your roof clean, check your port and your solar panel and make sure your vent covers are in good condition, no cracks from like falling branches or pine cones or anything and you should be good to go. So now we're inside, just general camper maintenance for in interior of all of our pop-up campers. Start over here with a refrigerator. That's pretty important on our, our list. When you're coming back from a trip, Best practices, take all your food and drinks out of here. Defrost your freezer. Once everything is clean and dry, check your drip tray if your camper has that. Make sure that's dry, just empty it out, wipe it down. So once the fridge is clean and dry, just we usually leave it cracked open a little bit if you can, just so airflow, you'll get less of the old refrigerator funky smell. So next time you use it, it's clean and it smells good. Wipe down your stove, keep your sink clean, wipe that down. Go through your winterizing processes of, as far as emptying the water tank drain, emptying the hot water, opening up your valves, running your pump. We have separate videos on that. Battery system is pretty important as well. Probably top two, top three items. Keeping your camper batteries topped off and charged up when you're not using the camper and it's just sitting in storage for months at a time. Batteries like to be full. They don't like to be stored in a discharge state. You'll basically kill the battery. The batteries won't come back to life. So if you want to plug your camper in to 120 volt AC shore power, like your garage, and turn your circuit breakers on, and this master switch has to be pulled out so pull that switch out, circuit breakers on, plug into shore power. That will give the camper battery or batteries a charge and keep them topped off. If you want to go one step further or do something different and not, if you're not in a place where you can plug your camper in, some customers will take the battery or batteries out, put them in their garage and buy a battery tender, a little battery trickle charger and keep them topped off. Springtime comes open up the camper, put the batteries in, they're full, they're ready to go. Maintenance as far as wiping everything down, if you've been in moist areas, condensation, humidity, it's raining, you've been having a family in here, you're breathing, wipe down all the walls, pop the roof up. If you're getting ready to put it in storage for months, turn the furnace on, turn the fan on, wipe everything down, kind of just do a good air out, clean up, wipe down, got your batteries taken care of, you got your water taken care of, fridge, you want to go one step further. Some customers in really moist, wet areas, wet climates, Seattle, Portland, 
they'll also take their bed cushions up here, take them out of the camper, put them in the garage, or put them in a closet for the winter, put them back in the spring. It's not common, but it, it is a nice thing. It gives some breathing room up here. If the top is down and the cushions are up here, there's not a lot of airflow. So having those out of there is good. If you've been in snow country, make sure that behind the panel up here, front and back is dry. If you can store the camper up in your garage, that's great. If you're storing the camper outside in the weather, sun, we usually recommend have the top down. Just put everything away dry, put the top down, park it, and should be good to go.